Hello, everybody. I'm Jonathan Coachman, and this is Super Bowl Sunday on EA Sports. Up next, we've got a good one on tap between the visiting Houston Texans and the Chicago Bears. With that, it's time for Super Bowl 54, and we'll send you now to Miami, standing by to call their fourth Super Bowl together. Here are Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Okay, Coach. Well, the road ends here. It has been a wild, often unpredictable 2019 season. And now it's time for the greatest spectacle in all of sports. Super Bowl 54 from Miami. You know, this town has played host to 10 Super Bowls in the past. And tonight, we write chapter number 11. And what a matchup we've got. Tonight, it's all on the line. We play for the Lombardi Trophy as it'll be the first time AFC champion Houston Texans taking on the NFC champions, the Chicago Bears. Brandon Gordon and Charles Davis, thrilled to be with you. Charles, what a turnaround they've had down in Houston. Four and 12 just two seasons ago, 11 and five with a wild card loss last year. And now here they are in Super Bowl 54. We know the city of Houston pretty well, right? Because it's hosted Super Bowls. What have they hosted? Three so far in their, their history? The Oilers prior to, now, of course, the Texans. Neither one of them has ever played in the big game. So that city's got to be out of its mind. I mean, think about how excited they are to have the Texans representing in the Super Bowl. They've been good recently. Now they got over the top, have a chance to take home the Lombardi Trophy. Meanwhile, the turnaround has been a sharp one for these Chicago Bears. 19-45, and 45, that was their record from 2014 through 17. Then the division title last year, everybody remembers the double doink in the playoffs. But now the Bears are back looking for what would be just their second Super Bowl title. Of course, you know they won plenty of titles prior to the Super Bowl coming into existence. They won eight NFL titles. Who will ever forget Papa Bear, George Howell, leading that franchise but they had made two appearances in the big game itself they won super bowl 20 pounded the patriots one of the most dominant performances we've ever seen and then they lost to peyton mang and the colts in super bowl 41 can this team do their own super bowl shuffle and grab the lombardi trophy and bring it back to chicago The first Super Bowl of the new decade, Super Bowl 54, is underway. This is taken at the three. Touchdown, Houston! With a first touchdown of this Super Bowl and a long one at that as his guys are able to strike first here in this opening quarter. Striking first in any game is very important, but on this stage, the biggest of stages in the Super Bowl, that's huge. You fully expect the other team to battle all the way through, but when you're the one setting the pace, jumping out in front, that has to feel great for the entire organization. Kaimi Fairbairn on for the extra point. And the Texans take a 7-0 lead. So how about that for an intriguing start? The opening kickoff of the ball game, return for a touchdown. So now the other return teams out there as they'll try to duplicate what they just saw. This is fielded at the goal line. And he'll 
will take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. The Bears coming out. Mitchell Trubisky at the helm. And the rise of Trubisky, a big story in this run to the NFC title. He's made such strides since that rookie campaign of 2017. And now the pressure intensifies as he tries to join Jim McMahon as the only quarterbacks to lead the Bears to a Super Bowl title. Trubisky on first down and now he'll tuck it and run he'll have a first down past the 40 and all the way up to the 46 just like that a pickup of 20 on their first play from scrimmage partner it's often the man coverage is easier for a quarterback to run against you get your receivers going downfield those guys are staying with them, and oftentimes they have their back to the quarterback, which opens up a lot of space and room, and they don't even know that he's taken off with it. What a big-time pickup on that play. A big hitter to start the drive has him up near midfield here for first and ten. Out of the gun, Trubisky. It's complete. Javon Wims, the open man. A good pickup there. Eight yards on the first down completion. Many teams, as soon as they spot man defense, if they haven't called a hitch, they'll get to it as fast as they can. They want to put the ball in the hands of one of their best playmakers and hope that he can break a tackle on the outside and go for big yardage. Facing a second and two after that last catch, good for eight yards. Here's the first carry for Tariq Cohen. And he'll be taken down at the 44-yard line. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. Second and two is prime time for a little bit of a gamble, isn't it? Open up the playbook, go play action, toss that bad boy deep. But in this situation, go ahead and give it to your back. Let him pick up a first down, keep the sticks moving. Now a fake on the give here as they try the run pass option. Now he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. Give him nine there on the first down completion. Nothing fancy on first down, but a very consistent type of a play. Hit that slant. A lot of people call it an extension of the running game, and it can be if that pass is completed, because you hit a guy on the run like that, you often can go yardage. Sets him up nicely for second down, staying ahead of schedule. And he can't find anywhere to go with it, and he goes down. You know, on these types of plays, we're always looking to assess blame. Okay, where did it break down? Sometimes it's just a great play. And this play will be blown up. He'll lose yardage back at the 38. Not at all what they envisioned on third down. Three yards in the wrong direction. A pass for negative yardage, obviously no good. Maybe he shouldn't have thrown it, or maybe he shouldn't have caught it. And I think we were seeing it at the same time, weren't we? Maybe you let that one go, right? Because you can see the lost yardage about to develop. But that goes against every instinct of a receiver. They're taught to catch everything. So it's really hard to be mad at him and yell at him for trying to make that play. Now for the field goal try, here's Eddie Pinheiro. This officially a 55-yard attempt. And this is off target to the left. Didn't get there anyway. It's no good. And this score will stay right where it is. Well, that is not what you want to see from him on the big stage, obviously. And he, he's been so reliable all season long. A big part of why they've gotten here to this game. But you have to wonder, will this haunt them later as the Super Bowl progresses? And what a job there by all 11 on the kick return. The blocking excellent. The return excellent. The result, six points. Now they're set up nicely at the 45-yard line after the missed field goal from 55. On first and 10, Watson. 
And an alley to run. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. The escapability in evidence there is that one. Good for 15 and a first. Partner, as a quarterback, sometimes you just got to know when the clock has gone off in your head, it's time to go. Tuck it and get all you can. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. They'll run for the first time to Johnson. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, this big defensive lineman will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. First carry for Carlos Hyde. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. It's a loss of two, now third down. Uh, it's a tough one right there. He ran right into the teeth of the blitz as the linebacker was freed up in order to stuff that one for a loss. I think quarterbacks got to see that. Got to find a way to audible into something a little more advantageous. They need to get to the 29 if they want to pick up a first here on third down. From the gun, here's Watson. Dumping it off for Johnson. And he'll be brought down with the first down and a late flag here, too. And he may get a few more tacked on for good measure. So that flag will cost him 15. And it doesn't matter anymore how you get the face mask. Any part of it is going to be 15 yards. So the face mask, quite a blessing there as they'll start out of harm's way with a first and 10. Following the penalty, it's Johnson. And this carry terminated at the eight-yard line. Good stick skill showing the power, but just not much room to operate. It's a six-yard pickup, and it gets him to second and four. Despite the blitz, they're still able to pick up a nice, solid gain. The disadvantage of blitzing often alters the normal spacing and run fits and leaves creases like they were able to exploit right there. Delay of game, offense. So that'll back him up five. Still second down. Following the delay, here's second and nine. They'll try the air now with Watson. And he's going to have to eat this one as down he goes. Eddie Goldman with a sack. No doubt that's a very good play defensively right there because you've always got to be aware that he can take off and make a big play with his legs. How about the way they were able to contain him? That also tells me the coverage was excellent downfield. Following the sack, it's now third and long for Watson and the Texans. Throwing on third down, Watson. It's complete to Hopkins. And they're going to drop him well shy of the first as he can only make it to the 11. They get only four that time as that leads us to a fourth down. Well, we hear so often how tackling has become almost a lost art in the NFL game. But it's so important to tackle well on these receivers, especially in a play like this one. 
third down. They gave him the underneath stuff. You got to go and make the tackle right away. So on fourth down, Texan kicker Kaimi Fairbairn comes on. Fairbairn able to put this one through. And the lead moves to 10 zip. So that's a seven-play drive that ultimately stalls out there at the end. Yeah, things were a little leaky in the beginning on that drive, weren't they? But how about the front seven? As they got closer to the goal line, things stiffened a little bit, forced the field goal. Well, we talk a lot about explosive plays on offense. How about an explosive play on special teams? Certainly one there on the kick return for a touchdown. Following the made field goal, he'll send this one away. This fielded at the two. And he'll get it up to about the 26-yard line just across the 25. You know, CD, as Chicago gets in gear for this next drive, you think about the 12-4 and four season that this franchise had in 2018. That was going to be hard to follow in 2019, but finishing 8-8, eight and eight, a much maligned 8-8 eight and eight with a lot of boos cascading through Soldier Field, probably not how they envisioned 2019. Not even close, and remember, they were the first game out of the gate for the 2019 season, opening at home on a Thursday night in the 100th season of the NFL against Green Bay. And that game was an offensive nightmare, really, for both teams. But Green Bay made more plays, ended up winning an ugly affair. Chicago was 29th on offense for the season. If they finish 15th or better, this team's clearly in the playoffs and dangerous and a threat to go to the Super Bowl. But 29th, even with that great defense, gave themselves no chance. And remember, they're committed to their quarterback, Mitchell Trubisky, who struggled again in 2019. On second down now, it's Cohen, and he'll get it out near the 40 to the 39. Four yards to pick up, first down. I know what you're thinking out there. I know a lot of you are thinking, take a shot downfield. It's a great spot for it. I'd say maybe later in the game, definitely in the second half. But right now, I think they were just trying to get some momentum built. Get a first down, pick it up, and keep moving. Quick throw here caught by Gabriel. No gain there on the completion. Second and ten. And this whole line, it is the lifeblood of the offense. They established the tone. Mean, nasty, physical. They can't wait to get after people. That allows the rest of the offense to feel confident. to throw on second down. Trubisky, and he can't get rid of it. He's taken down. Whitney Merciless, showing no mercy, flies in for the sack. And we talk about players blitzing all the time. I often laugh and sometimes call it just straight-ahead pursuit. What a running start right back to the backfield for him. Yeah, it really didn't give anybody a chance to get up there and stop him. No, I mean, that's really, really difficult. You're asking a whole lot anyway, but when he gets that kind of a start and comes through clean, Oftentimes, the advantage definitely goes to the defensive player. After that sack we just saw, Trubisky and the Bears deal with a third and long. Now Trubisky on third and long. Going to let one fly for Robinson. And he knocks the ball away, and it falls incomplete. That makes them now 0 for 2 here in the first quarter on third down conversions. And now they'll look to their defense because they need them to step up so they don't fall further behind here in the early going. So on fourth down, on is the punter Pat O'Donnell to kick it away. DeAndre Carter is deep for the Texans. Oh, and he's taken down here by his face mask by the looks of it. And a penalty flag is going to give a much better starting position. 
Officials so cognizant of that call nowadays, but that would look pretty easy. And yeah, you're right. Down. They took out of their hands having to wonder whether it's a five yard or a 15 yard inadvertent or not. Now it's a lot easier. You see it, you call it. The Texans offense ready to go here for their next drive. They're looking sharp out early to a 10-zip lead and looking for more as they've got it first and 10. Here's Hyde on the draw. And they will only muster a yard here to the 38. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. They stay on the ground. This time it's Johnson. And he is swallowed up right at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there, so that doesn't help. Now they're looking up at a third and nine situation. The Bears bring out an extra defender in the secondary now for third down. Out of the gun, Watson. He's going to air one out. This is caught inside the 15. And he takes this thing way down into Chicago territory. I know we love our jobs. And pretty much any play we see, we're pretty, you know, excited about. But big plays, let's face it, that's what we absolutely live for. How about that one? That was great. And what our camera missed was the fist pump from the sideline after that catch. They're fired out. That's a big game. So how about this for field position after the big play? Inside the 15 now as they come up on first and 10. To throw is Watson. Now he'll escape to his left. He'll try and run it. And he will have a touchdown. With the first touchdown of this Super Bowl. And the Texans push further out in front. Well, the defensive coverage was good. So good, he just decided to make a play of his own, and it worked out. Yeah, you often wonder if they think to themselves, was the coverage too good to allow him to run the football? I think you'd rather take your chances with him doing exactly that. And he beat him on that play all the way to the end zone. Fairbairn now to add the extra point. He's got it, and it's 17-0. Just a four-play drive that time. And the final act belonged to Deshaun Watson in his touchdown run. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbairn now to kick it away. This will be taken in at the one. And he'll get across the 20 before he's brought down at about the 23-yard line. And now Chicago getting ready to go as they take the field. They trail early on in this Super Bowl as they come up first and 10. Trubisky brings the Bears up first and 10 at their own 23. First carry now for David Montgomery. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage back at the 22. It'll be a loss of a yard, and that'll bring up a second and 11. I like the strategy. Extra tight ends, extra beef. They want to run the football, but that means they probably want to run it inside. If you get strung out on the perimeter, you're in peril. Yeah, we saw the result. Negative yardage. A 
loss of a yard there to start out. That leads to a second and 11. Bring it. Bring it. Yes, bring it. They'll get four out of that, and it'll bring up a third down. The defensive crew for the Texans. Here's a look. Jaleel Adai's versatility is a big plus for him. He can match up against the tall receivers. He can match up against the short, quick receivers. He can cover inside. He can cover outside. And as an added bonus, he tackles well, too. And the Texans have an extra defender in the secondary now on third down. From the gun, it's Trubisky. And it's a short one here, complete to his tight end. And he will be out of bounds here on what will turn out to be the final play of this first quarter. 17-0, our score after one. Here's Pat O'Donnell now, as he'll kick it away for the second time. His first punt, 48 yards. This one looks equally as good. And you can't do it much better than that. This ball kicks out of bounds at the four-yard line. That is how you flip field position. That's an absolute bomb of a punt. Downs it inside the five-yard line absolutely ideal from that position you're hoping to get it down inside the 15 inside the five superb and now out comes houston and they will start this drive with just terrible field position backed up inside their own five but we have seen teams be bold here and take shots right sometimes you go max protection make it a one receiver route and take your shot downfield and see what happens and occasionally we've seen success occur and he's going to go down right near the goal line. The officials look at each other. They're going to mark him at the one-yard line. That sack by Khalil Mack. Oh, boy, he got a favorable spot there. The guys on the sidelines were raising their hands over their head and clasping their hands to signal safety. But the official marked it just outside the end zone at the one-yard line. following the sack they'll try to change their fortune here on second and 13. now a run with Hyde and Hyde is going to need somewhere to hide he's tackled in the end zone for a safety and you know the man who sat in my chair the last few years he has a theory these plays these safeties they're so rare maybe they should be worth more than two maybe four points I think he's got a great point I really do Brandon but I would go ahead and up it to six. I'm a former defender. Ooh. To me, that's like scoring a touchdown. Easy now. I'll go four. I don't know about six. Come on, come on. Come up to six. <laughs> a lot of points. So a free kick situation forthcoming from the 20 as they'll punt this one away. This is taken at about the 14. Now Allen Robinson and company gearing up to go again on offense. With them losing here in the second quarter and his limited productivity so far, you'd have to think they're going to try to look to him a little bit more, right? I would guess you would start to see maybe some quick screens, some hitches, anything to get the ball in his hands quickly and let him try and do some damage after the catch. Or maybe just flip some formations and keep him isolated where it's more of a one-on-one -on -one route and get the ball to him. I say just four verts, right? Yeah, why not? Four <laughs> verts or the best routes in football. Hard to cover each guy all the way along the route. So far, just one catch for him. The tackle that time by Zach Cunningham. I think they want to start getting back into this game, it behooves them to get better on first down. Yeah, certainly not what they were looking for there out of the opening play of this drive. Here's second and nine, just a yard on that last run. 
A quick throw out wide, caught by Robinson. And he's going to be taken down right at the line. No gain that time on the completion, and it'll be third down. Pass complete. But no gain. No yards. Yeah. So you file that as unsuccessful. Yeah, you do, don't you? Except on the stats, throwing the ball. Get a completion. You get a catch. Yeah. But still, no yardage. Okay. Throwing here, Trubisky. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Whitney Merciless, his second sack of the night. How about that, partner? His second sack of the game, and that puts him in some pretty good company. 17 guys have had two sacks in the previous 52 Super Bowls, but only three have had the record number of three sacks in this game. And we've got the list here. If he gets another one and everyone behaves nicely, we might just list those out for him. Here's Pat O'Donnell now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. So a change of possession here on the punt. And the Texans will take over with a first and ten. Getting set to go again, DeAndre Hopkins marches back onto the field. Second quarter here, he has only one catch, but they have the lead. you got to think, though, he's going to be more involved at some point. That's what you would expect, but sometimes what defenses do to take away a player of his magnitude, it costs them in other areas, and right now, with them losing, they may have to change their focus, and maybe he will open up a little bit more as the game goes on. Yeah, well, so far, just the single catch. Watson will bring up the Texans here, first and 10 at their own 27. Here's Hyde as they begin on the ground. A solid run on first down, gain of seven, leaves him with a second and three. And there we saw one of the downsides of blitzing during a rundown because sometimes you get out of your gaps. You don't fit the run quite as well because you're headed towards the ball carrier with abandon. Throwing on second and three. Watson, slot. And he can't find a receiver, and he's brought down. The inside linebacker, Danny Trevathan, gets the sack. Brandon, if I'm an offensive coordinator and I see an all-out rush like that, I file it away because I'm going to use their aggressiveness against them as this game goes on. I'm going to hit them with a screen soon. Texans on third down. They've been okay. Two for three thus far. This is third and eight. A shotgun snap for Watson. He's got his tight end. It's fouls. And he will be very close to a first down, but I see the close fist of the referee, and that means fourth down. He wasn't the primary target, but I think it was almost like a, a check down situation, wasn't it? Yeah, hoping he can break some tackles, a big tight end, but he couldn't do it. Yeah, get it to that big frame and hope he can scatter some bodies, unable to get it done. On fourth down, here's Brian Anger now to kick this one away. Tariq Cohen is deep for the Bears. And this one hits at the three and then bounds into the end zone for a touchback. Here's the Chicago offense coming back out onto the field. And right now these guys, they're shuffling a little bit, maybe doubting because three straight drives have ended with him punting the football away. Yeah, so you start pointing fingers at each other a little bit, asking a lot of questions. What are you seeing? What are you getting? Maybe trying to narrow down your playbook a little bit and maybe get simpler rather than more complex in order to try and fashion together a drive. Trubisky brings the Bears up first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. To Montgomery to begin the drive. He'll get about three as he's taken down at the 23. One thing to keep in mind, partner, especially in the second half, when you've got a running back of this size, of these dimensions, I can just tell you, attrition does set in for a defense because you're excited about hitting him in the first half, Maybe not so much in the second half, and some of these shorter gains turn into bigger runs later. On second down, Montgomery. 
And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. Mark that down as a pickup of 13, and the Bears have the first. I'm okay with the call there. In fact, I actually like it. I know they're down a couple of scores, but the running game worked in that situation. I would continue to go in that direction. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Give me that ball, defense. Give me that ball. Give me that ball, defense. Delay of game, offense. That's going to set him back five yards. Go. Still first down. So a little bit of a stiffer challenge now. First and 15 following the delay of game. Trubisky gives to Cohen. Give him a couple on the run there. It'll be second and 13. Doubling this guy has to be a priority before moving up to the next level because the big fella, he just ate Dalvin alive, just stuffed it. In fact, before the game, he was talking to us, and he's like, hey, these pants make me look fat, and we said, nah, man, you're just a whole lot of guy. He is at well over 300 pounds. He's a big man. Now on second and 13, Trubisky. And some room to run now. And he's able to get it back here to the 43-yard line. And, Brandon, this is a real nice job defensively of getting inside a quarterback's head and figuring out, okay, where is he going with the football? Because you can make an educated guess defensively, not all the time, but sometimes. And when you're right, you've got a decent chance of coming away with the football. DeAndre Hopkins and the rest of the offense heading back onto the field. He hasn't had his usual star-studded performance so far, but still the second quarter, and they're still up on the scoreboard. And sometimes even as a decoy, you can have a big impact on the game, and that's what we've seen thus far. They're still able to get it done. They found other ways. They haven't had to utilize him as a top priority just yet, but you know he's waiting and available. Yeah, now the question is, how will they utilize him here? Let's get it together, defense. Let's get it together. First down, a run with Hyde. And some good tackling there as he stopped up at about the 41. Big Eddie Goldman there on the tackle. Early down stuffs to put this offense in a precarious position. We know that securing the point of attack, especially against the big bodied guys in the middle of this D, has got to be priority one. And he was able to shed the tackle, but the reserves come in for the stop. He'll wind up getting three on the keeper there, but it leads to a third down. And that's one of the reasons you like to blitz even on rundowns. It confuses the blocking assignments. It doesn't allow those offensive linemen to get up to the second level. The Texans on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This is third and four. Watson now to throw. Open man is QT complete. And he's got the first as they'll bring him down at the 28-yard line. They get nine out of that one, and as a result, the drive continues. As an unbiased observer, I think it would have been interesting to see what they would have done if they hadn't gotten the first down there. But since they did, I guess the point is moved. Yeah, they're right there in that middle ground, field goal range, punt, go for it. But as you said, they picked it up. They'll run on first down. Hyde. And he'll take this down just shy of the 25-yard line. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. 
Well, we saw him there trying to get it to the outside, trying to get to the perimeter, but not a whole lot of room there. But there's got to be one positive to that. If you keep moving laterally, creases tend to develop as the game moves on, and they can run it back inside later. On second down, high. And give him about three as he gets it down to the 22-yard line. Well, he hasn't made much of an impact in the running game thus far, and after that last run, not much is going to change in that area. He hasn't been able to get anything going, and really the offensive line not helping him much. The Texans on third down. They've converted three out of five thus far. This will be third and five. Here's Watson operating from the gun. He finds his target, Fuller. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made here at the Bears' 12-yard line. Watson in the offense going to come up first and ten. And he's a perfect five for five here to begin the game. Operating from the gun, Watson. And that's going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. The beauty of being able to play a zone defense when you can sit back and see the ball coming out of the quarterback's hands. Guess what? Creates a lot of confusion. Kind of a muddle in the middle of the field. We can go make a play on the football. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. And back to the ground. High. And strong running there as he's inside the ten and down to the eight-yard line. Give him four on the ground there. They're now left with third and six. That second down play call was not to pick up the first down. It was to accomplish what they did to get him into a manageable third down because they had incompletion on first down, so they were behind the sticks, so to speak. They needed to make up some ground, and they did. Watson on third down. He can, and he will score. It's a touchdown. Deshaun Watson, his second touchdown of the Super Bowl. And the Texans push further out in front. And always a good first half when you can hit pay dirt twice. And it never hurts to have that good feeling as the game moves on. Just think about halftime. If, if this is all he gets, he'll just sit there at the half and think, all right, two already. I can get some more. I can get some more. And he'll be encouraging his offensive line to create some space. On for the PAT, Kaimi Fairbairn. And the lead opens up now to 22 points. That time, a nine-play drive. And the final act belonged to Deshaun Watson in his touchdown run. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbairn now to kick it away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. Mitchell Trubisky and the Bears set to begin their next drive. In the second quarter, they're down big already. He's struggling as well. They've got to find something here. He's got to find something on this drive. And sometimes you take on all that extra pressure on yourself, and maybe you have to disperse it a little bit. Lean on some other people. Lean on your teammates. Find someone who can take the pressure off and get the ball in their hands for a while. Or this, if he doesn't, this is getting out of hand, or it could get worse. They'll start on the ground with Montgomery. And he will lose yardage on the play. Back at his own 19-yard line. Call it a full three yards in the wrong direction there. Brings up second down. 
One thing rookies need to learn at this level and quick. Make a cut, be decisive, and go. Because in college, you could dance around and wait for a hole to open because you're probably a better athlete than most of the guys on the field, but not on the NFL level. So now they have to contend with second and 13 after the first down run goes backwards. Draw play here. Trubisky gives to Cohen. He'll be dropped at the 25 after a gain of six. Two minutes even on the clock in the first half of Super Bowl 54. Coming up at intermission, we'll get highlights of this Super Bowl from Jonathan Coachman of the crew in Orlando for our EA Sports Halftime Report. Now throwing on third down there, but he cannot connect. Well, it's looking like another three and out here, and at some point, you've got to be able to put together a drive to keep your defense from having to go right back out on the field. I feel like things are starting to unravel a little bit, and we're not even at halftime. Here's Pat O'Donnell now. He's been one of their few bright spots so far. A big rush by the Texans, and they block it. It's picked up. Remember, the ball is live. And it's a touchdown. In for the score. And the Texans push further out in front. Partners, you well know, every block punt wasn't necessarily a called block. Sometimes the guy just finds his way back there doesn't matter the play happens and that one turned into six points because they handled it so well after the block Fairbairn now to add the extra point. And that'll push the lead up to 29 now. Able to get the pressure, get a paw on it, knock it down, and then go and grab it and take it into the end zone. What a play. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbairn now to kick it away. This is taken at his four. And he'll take this up past the 20 and down at the 22-yard line. And this offense led by Mitchell Trubisky going to make their way back out there. He's got to dig deep here, doesn't he? Team's losing. He's not playing well either. And they always tell you, don't press. You'll make things a little bit worse. But in this particular situation, you try and heighten your play a little bit. So far, he's thrown one interception. He wants to balance that off with at least one touchdown pass in order to get his team back moving forward. Looking to throw Trubisky on first down. Got a man open. It's Wims. And they work this well upfield across the 45. A good pick up there. 26 yards. It's been a very one-sided game so far. They got to change what they're doing right now, don't they? You can't wait till the halftime speech to make an adjustment. No, you can't because if you're doing it right, you're adjusting from series to series. And they need a big adjustment here to try to put some points on the board. Trubisky will throw. And this is Gabriel on the catch. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. I always laugh when people say, what's the toughest route to defend? And I'm like, any of them, especially if it's a good receiver, that makes things very difficult. But when you're running a drag route, 
something short, shallow, going through defenders, using guys almost as, as screens in order to get open, that makes things tougher, guys trying to get to the football. This is Cohen. Now the Bears going to use the second of their timeouts as the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. The Texans here on third down putting an extra defender in the secondary. From the shotgun is Trubisky. It's a short one here, complete to the tight end. And he's got the first down yardage before he's brought down at the 42. Two yards and able to get the first down in the process. They're going to need to get up and set in a hurry. On first and 10, it's Trubisky. That is caught by Cohen. And he got blown up. Losing yardage on the play back at the 44. Now the Bears will use their third and final timeout as the clock will stop with 21 seconds to go here in the first half. Second and 12 after the first down pass play went backwards for two yards. Now Trubisky to throw. This is caught by Robinson. And they're going to be set up down around the 15-yard line. And he's going to be taken down with another first down as the stop's made at the Texans' 15-yard line. So it's halftime here on Sports Grandest Stage in the Super Bowl. As we send you up to Orlando to check in with Jonathan Coachman and our EA Sports Halftime Report. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. What a season this has been. Hard to believe it ends tonight. As we'll get back to you guys for the second half of this Super Bowl in just a moment. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. The never tedious halftime show behind us, and now it's back to football as we get going again in Super Bowl 54. This fielded at the two. And he'll take this across the 25, a couple extra yards up to the 27 yard line. So here's the Bears offense now as they get set to start this third quarter. They have the ball here for the inaugural drive of the second half. Pretty big deficit, though. We'll see what adjustments were made in that locker room. And I never want to make something more important than it actually is, right? I don't want to create more hype than what is there. But oh, this is a do that? I'm doing it, though. <laughs> this is a really important drive. And we often talk about teams scripting plays to start a game. A lot of them script to start the second half, too. And they're scripting something that they expect to get them into the end zone and back into this game. We'll see if that script is a good one for them. And they're able to swarm him behind the line, and his rough night continues. Well, it's time for them to be good teammates right here. And what I mean by that is possess the ball for a little while. Get at least two first downs. Give their defense a chance to settle down a little bit after they give up a touchdown. I'm going to run you over. I'm going to run you over. 
They'll keep pounding here with Montgomery. He'll have a first down past the 40. And he's going to get this to the 40-yard line. A gain there of 12 yards and a first down for the Bears. A couple of very nice carries to start this drive out. Yeah, two first downs. And how about that second one? What a nice run on that particular play. I'm telling you, they're going to start to think that this game is easy if they continue to rip off yardage like this. second down after seeing that maybe time to go back to some downfield throws here yeah anything change it up because the teams that win the best teams they're the ones that make adjustments doesn't mean you can't come back to what you thought you could get done sometimes when you open things up a little bit you can get back to what you wanted to do before now on second and 13 Trubisky, Javon Wims, the intended target, and it's third down. They always say that real estate is about location. Well, guess what? When it's a slant route, the quick ones, timing, timing, timing. Got to be able to lead your man with the football. And the timing off right there, threw it behind him. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Now it's Trubisky. Going to let one fly for Robinson. That's going to be knocked away and incomplete. Well, this secondary has done such a good job of frustrating these receivers tonight. Another example right there on the deep ball. Sometimes when the sun goes down and it's just the bright lights in the stadium, there's a little extra spring in their step, doesn't it? And that's what we're seeing from the defenders. Doesn't matter whether it's man or zone, deep ball, short ball. And that was a deep one there. They're making plays on the football, contesting everything. Here's Pat O'Donnell now. Remember, though, he did have one blocked earlier. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. And a nice job here to down this one right on the five-yard line. Deshaun Watson making his way back out. The focus of our player's spotlight. And maybe he's starting to wave the white flag a little bit. He's playing pretty well. But the pressure, it's got to him. Has to find a way to step around it, step through it, or just handle it. Because as you mentioned, he's having a pretty good day overall. Just the hits keep coming and taking those sacks. That's not the way that they want to finish a ball game with their quarterback on the ground so much. Uh, he'd like to stay upright. When he's been upright, he's been pretty good. The Texans 19. offense ready to go here for their next drive. They have the lead here. Well, we talk a lot about pregame speeches. What are halftime speeches like? For the most part, not nearly as emotional. They're a lot more clinical. Every now and then, though, they'll get after you if they think they need to light a fire. But in this case, let's go into the virtual locker room because here's what I think happened. They got in there and they said, listen, let's take control right away. Yeah, Defense, we got the, yeah. we got the, we got the, got the lead. Defense, don't give up any points. Turn the ball back over to the offense and let them go down and score and give us more of a cushion in the game. Check so far. Defense shut them down. Let's see if the offense gets done. And they'll get him down up past the 15-yard line. Ten yards there, good enough for a Texan first down. They're trying to show that they can run the ball and protect this lead. Give it to the backs, play a little bit of keep away, don't you think? And that's probably a good philosophy at this point, going to make that defense stand up and stop them. So following the run by Hyde, here's first and 10. Here's Watson. And the catch made by Hopkins. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. They get 14 on that one. Good for a Houston first down. If you're going to blitz, likely going to leave you in man coverage with this guy, and that is less than ideal. It is because just about any offense that has an elite receiver, if you blitz and have him in man coverage, you're going to him, even if he has an elite defender on him, because he usually knows where the ball is before the defender does. Set, 
Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. Here we go, here we go, here we go. From the gun, a run for Johnson. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. This defense tough to run against, and those linebackers, they'll go side to side up the field, and there they get them for no gain. If you can't get linemen upfield to the second level to occupy them, they have a field day just running to the football and putting ball carriers on the ground. Not many yards after contact when they wrap up like that. Now left side, a completion to his tight end. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. Last play, they got stuffed at the line. Different story here, over 20 yards. The goal for any offense versus his own defense, find the holes where guys are available and put the ball on the receiver before any defender can step up and fill it. They did it well there. Perfectly executed crossing route. So into Bear territory now. This is first and 10 at the 47. Running from the gun, Johnson. Buster Screen is able to bring him down. Third quarter and you've got the lead. You're not ready to go into that four-minute offense to close the game out, but a running game could really benefit your team right now. The last run got three. Now here's second and seven. Watson, off play action. And an alley to run. Deshaun Watson, so multidimensional, able to scramble for the first. Normally we're talking about a quarterback duel where they're matching each other pass for pass. How about the footwork in this with both of these guys running the ball well? Yeah, they mixed in the run game. You're exactly right. Now, both coaches might not like how much their quarterbacks <laughs> have taken off, but another example right there of just good mobility. On first down, Watson. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. You get a tight end like this, and you know he's used to dishing out punishment, but here, he's one that has to absorb the contact, and as a result, unable to hold on to the football. From the 34, they'll come to the line on second and 10. Now Hyde. And he'll get a little over two, maybe a full three down to the 32-yard line. They know that old expression, it's not my night. It hasn't been his so far. I don't know if the legs are a little bit heavy. Sometimes having to hang out all day and play doesn't exactly play to your advantage, but it's been a tough go for him. And every time he looks up, somebody's there defensively. That was the same case on that play. Now it's Watson. He'll buy some time right. He may try and run for this. And this effort will not get it done. He stopped well short of the first down at the 29. He certainly had plenty of success running the ball. And right now, I'm getting the sense that he's looking to take off and run every time he steps back to throw it. But they did a nice job there collapsing on him and holding him to a short game. And for the second time tonight, this field goal unit comes out here. Made his first. This now from 46 yards away. And this is right down the middle as he puts it through. And that will just add three more to a lead that's already out of hand. So the field goal there caps what winds up to be an 11-play drive. Well, partner, that's a lot of offense to run there to only get three points. So I just wonder, are they going to recycle those plays because they were successful in getting three? Or do you go to another section of the playbook trying to find ones that get you into the end zone, get you six? Fairbairn now following the made field goal. He'll send this one away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. 
And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Onto the field now come the Bears. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. But you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times, the punter goes to the sideline, puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. Trubisky brings the Bears up first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. Now Trubisky. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And they're able to get this one across the 35. Mark that down as a pickup of 13, and the Bears have the first. Sometimes the most effective routes are the ones that you run in the backyard. You probably ran them when you were five years old. How about a little curl there against zone? But the key to it? is finding the open spots in the zone. How a linebacker or a defensive back will widen to give you space. Find that area and let your quarterback hit you. The throw over the middle taken in. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down. Second and right at a yard. That last catch short of the marker by just a yard leaves him with a very manageable second and one. It's complete to Robinson. And he'll get it down to the 47 here. Still in search of their first touchdown of the game, but they're on the move. First and ten. Now Trubisky going to give this to Montgomery. He'll get about four here, down to the 43-yard line. On any running play that's called, they're always hoping that it's going to break big and go the distance. But when you get a nice game like that, you're able to do so many things anyway. You can come back and run essentially the same play again, continue to move the ball on the ground, or you can decide to throw the ball now because usually you have the defense back on its heels. To throw on second and six. Trubisky, he's got a first down and more inside the 30. And down to the 29-yard line. And he's going to be taken down with another first down as the stop's made at the Texans' 29-yard line. Sometimes guys get locked into such a groove. What do we call it? The game's slowing down. They see everything happening almost in slow motion. They see the lanes develop. I feel like he's right there. Well, and you want this from your leader, right? With this deficit, this stage of the game, second half, no quit in him. Zero. Trubisky now. Five straight completions here in this second half. First and ten. Out of the gun, Trubisky rolling to his right. And now he's going to use his legs. He'll wind up getting nine after tucking it and running, so it'll leave him with second and a yard. Well, he's proven real effective running the football. No one open, don't force it. Just get what you can, and that's what he's done very well in this game. Looking to throw again on second down. Trubisky, he was trying to hit Taylor Gabriel that time. And it's third and short. I know coaches tell us all the time that having a powerful arm isn't the number one thing they look for in a quarterback. But when you're trying to throw inside routes and you need to put some heat on it, it helps to have the big gun. In this case, just a little bit too much. This will be play number seven on the drive. Third and a yard. Now it's Trubisky. And Robinson with a big catch. And he takes it down to the 13 and picks up the first. Let's go, baby. A Let's Chicago go. first down, the former Jag, Allen Robinson, on the catch from Trubisky. Well, they've had a great, impressive drive going here, and that pickup ensures the drive continues. And not only do you continue the drive, which is demoralizing for the guys on the defense side of the ball right now, but you make your own defense happy. They're able to get a little more rest over on the sidelines while this one continues downfield. From the red zone now, here's Trubisky on first down. And he completes it to Cohen. Give him three on the play, and it'll make it a second down. 
I know most of the time when the ball's in the air, you're thinking wide receiver, tight end, but running backs, they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays. That first down completion only netted him three. Second and seven. Looking to throw again, Trubisky. That's complete to Robinson. And the stop will come inside the five at the four. The reception good for seven. It's third down. Fired that one in there, able to make connection on a nice in route. With those faster passes when they're going that fast, any hesitation as a quarterback that the deflection, if you miss, might be bigger and lead to an interception? Yeah, and the deflection works both ways. Maybe a defender gets a hand in the way and it pops in the air. And sometimes you throw it so hard your receiver can't handle it, and he pops it up in the air for the defenders to grab as well. But a moot point there is they were able to connect. Just a yard, but that's all they needed. And by the slimmest of margins, it'll be first and goal. I know the game's changed. A lot of people would say it's evolved. Look, I'm a little bit Neanderthal, okay? I love this. No exotic formations, no misdirection. Just line up and run the darn ball, pick up the first down. I love it. Yeah, third and short, that's what you're supposed to do. Like you said, old school smash mouth football. One quarter remains here in the Super Bowl. And that'll do it for the end of the second quarter. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. Trubisky and it's incomplete broken up but there is a flag down let's see what that's about offense too far downfield something those linemen have to watch out for and that time it costs them able to get it down to the two-yard line. It'll be a gain of five there as they move closer. It's second and goal. When we talk about being on schedule, I think they're on schedule after that run, getting it right down there on the doorstep. Maybe even a little bit ahead because now the defense can't dictate with pressure. They're guessing about where you're going to go. I might come right back at them with the same play, the same set, and see if they can stop them. And he can't find anywhere to go with it, and he goes down. D.J. Reader able to drop him for a loss of four from his defensive tackle spot. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. touchdowns in the red zone twice already here comes third and goal here's Trubisky gets this to his running back Tariq Cohen that'll back him up two yards and also bring up fourth well, they try to swing it on left into the flat. Complete, but really nice open field tackling. And they played that one like a great boxer. They were on their toes on that one. They weren't back on their heels reacting to the play. No, they saw it, came right for it, and made a nice tackle for lost yardage. If they're going to have a shot in this Super Bowl, they're going to need this one on fourth down. They'll try and throw for it with Trubisky. And he's going to have to eat this one as down he goes. He couldn't get the ball away on fourth and goal. And this long drive is going to wind up yielding nothing. And they've now made two trips to the red zone and still looking for their first touchdown. 
not able to punch it in. And if you're on defense, your confidence is sky high because mentally you're saying, hey, you're in the red zone. We're thinking we're giving up three. We just want to give up six. In this case, they end up not giving up the touchdown at all. They've got to feel great about what they got done. Out comes the Houston offense as they get set to take over here. Well, this ball game certainly has gotten a little out of hand. This is normally when they say you, you got to fill. This is fill time for guys like you and I. But yeah, to be frank, just a dominating performance. Really impressive what we've seen. It is, and I'm glad that you went in that direction because otherwise we're going to talk about the museum tour we took yesterday. Which was also impressive. Which was also very <laughs> yeah. impressive. But this game, how they've done it, offense, defense, special teams. They put it all together. And I gotta tell you, I am beyond impressed by what I've seen from this team. All that and it only nets of a yard. It's second down. Second and nine at the 14 yard line. You set! Come on, boy! Come on, boy! On second down, Johnson. And Johnson lost the football. It's loose, poked out. And this is picked up by the Bears. And his guys will take over at the 14-yard line in the red zone. So the defense there, opportunistic. It's nice to give them credit, isn't it? Because so many times it's more a matter of what the offensive guy didn't do. He didn't secure the ball, didn't cover up. In this case, let's just give credit to where it belongs. Knocked it free, made a big play. And now Chicago getting ready to go as they take the field. They had a great drive going last time. They were moving the ball, and then all of a sudden it just stalled out. So we'll see what they can do here, Charles. And it's always easy to second guess when you don't get it on a fourth down try. But they had to like the feeling that they had going on offense. They want to continue to see if they can capture that again on this drive and maybe get in the same position. Yeah, and that's, I mean, like I said, they were moving the football. It's not like they went four and out, so I don't think it's a deal where the offense doesn't have confidence. No, I agree with you totally on that one. If, if anything, they may have gained more confidence. Okay, they stopped us once. That's all right. Let's keep moving it. Make them do it again. All that that only nets them a yard. It's second down. On second and nine, Trubisky. Open man, Taylor Gabriel. That one good for the completion percentage, but no gain. It'll be third down. Now the old pass completion for no gain, not something you want to call up out of the playbook too often. Yeah, most offensive coordinators don't have that on their play sheet, so they've got to go back and scramble after this one. But right now with what they're telling receivers about making sure you take care of the ball in open field, Sometimes the fighting for extra yardage doesn't come as a result. That and good tackling can lead to no yards gained. Meanwhile, on third down, they take a shot at the end zone, but it's incomplete. Well, the trials and tribulations of being a quarterback in this league, it's tough. It's got to be wearing on him out there. Well, he has been sacked a number of times. He had an interception, so I'm going to give him a skosh of credit for hanging in there and trying to make something happen, despite the amount of pressure he's been under this entire game. The kick by Pinheiro is good. And that will knock this down to still a very large 29-point deficit. Well, in the grand scheme of things, those three points likely not going to matter much, but I guess they get a little closer, a little more respectability. Yeah, you're exactly right. They've been outplayed all game long, but like my mom used to tell me all the time before I went out, dress up a little bit, son. Make yourself respectable. <laughs> and that's what they're doing here. They're just dressing up the final score. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. This is taken at the three. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. Here comes the Bears defense now back onto the field. We've got a lopsided game here. I don't know, Charles, what does the handbook say that we, we discuss when we've got a game like this in the fourth quarter? Hold on a second. Let me, let me thumb to the proper page on that. 
Know what it says? What? Let's discuss how we got here. This is a dominant performance, where they took control of this game, how they've managed to keep control of this game, and then we go ahead and think about how we're going to leave here and get to the airport. <laughs> In a lopsided blowout, the roads are usually open. Watson will bring up the Texans here, first and 10, just shy of the 30. And that's going to be incomplete. The incompletion there stops the clock. Any surprise they're throwing here late? Ordinarily, yes, because you would think enough is enough. They've got plenty of lead, but I've seen this a bunch of times as well. The defense is going to crowd the line of scrimmage. If you just hand it off inside, you're getting your running back popped a lot as well. Sometimes the defense dictates it. If they're going to crowd it, you may have no other choice but to throw it downfield. Call it a gain of four, and it'll leave them with a third down and six to go. Bottom line, they want to keep this clock rolling, so they'll take that one right there. They just want to keep falling forward, and they want to put the onus on the big fellas up front in order to bring this one home. The Texans on third down. They've had good success, five for eight to this point. This will be third and six. He finds Hopkins complete. Oh, he breaks a tackle, and he's got an alley. And he'll be tackled right on the chalk of the 45. That's good for a Texan first down, a 12-yard pickup. When you call a wide receiver screen, no matter how many blockers you get in front of the guy that catches the ball, there's still an aspect of the guy catching it, turning into a runner, breaking tackles and creating his own yardage, and he just did on that play. down. Hyde pushing forward for three up to the 48. Not much happening there on first down. I thought there might have been a hole for a split second. Yeah, but it dried up pretty quickly, didn't it? Closed fast. Three yards on that last carry. Here's second and seven. Again, it's Hyde. And he's got it across midfield and into Bear territory. Well, if you're a football guy, that's a pretty run because everyone is in sync right there. Obviously, the guy carrying the ball, but how about the people up front? Leverage, athleticism, they created some nice space for him. The Texans on third down. Six conversions and nine tries. They've done a great job of picking these up. This time, it's third and three. Back to throw, Watson. He finds his target, Fuller. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made here at the Bears' 34-yard line. He's such a good route runner. Shows it there on third down. Very proficient and a good pass. And you know what I've observed over the years in the NFL? The better a route runner you are, the more confidence your guy's going to have in you to go to you in important times because he can trust you being in the right spot. And they connected there and picked up a first down. Watson now six for six since coming back out of the locker room. It's first and ten. And that play went nowhere. Losing yardage. It'll be back at the 36. A loss of two there. Second down. If you're a selfish player and you're throwing the ball, you're cool with the completion. Maybe not so cool with the yardage loss, though. Huh? Yeah, you went, you went backwards on the yardage. Hey, it kind of works like a sack for the defense there. Yeah, it's a really big play for them, right? Able to figure it out, sniff it out, and finish it off. A small bit of adversity here on what's been a strong drive as they come up second and 12. Watson throwing quickly to Hopkins. No gain that time on the completion, and it'll be third down. Brandon, just mark that under the category of just not successful. Trying to throw the ball, just didn't work on that one. Completed it. No yardage. Ninth play of the drive coming up, and certainly not an easy one on third and long. Watson. And an alley to run. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made here at the Bears 23. We just saw a nice example of why teams often bring in baseball guys to teach quarterbacks how to slide in key situations. You want to protect your franchise guy, make sure he doesn't get hurt. He did exactly that on that play. A perfect slide to avoid the big hit and pick up a first down. Focus it. 
On first down, it's Watson. And got his man. It's caught. Touchdown, Houston. Jordan Thomas there to make the grab as his guys continue to put this one out of reach. So another score there. Often you talk about the three phases of the game. Defense, offense, special teams. It's been a clean sweep in this one, hasn't it? It certainly has. They've been pretty dominant throughout this game. And privately, the head coach will add a fourth phase. That's the coaching. And he'll tell the ownership that as he tries to negotiate a new contract off of this win. So they are looking strong here in the fourth quarter. Fairbairn good with the extra point. And that will extend this big lead. A 10-play drive that time, and it results in the Texans finding the end zone. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbairn now to kick it away. This fielded at the two. And he'll take this across the 25. A couple extra yards up to the 27-yard line. Here's the Chicago offense coming back out onto the field. And they had three points last time, but they didn't want three points because they were well within range of scoring a touchdown. We'll see if they can do better now. I'm with you on that one. Let's just go ahead and be frank about the whole thing. The only one happy about the three-point? The kicker. Exactly. <laughs> he put it through the post. That's going to help him at contract time. But that offense, they're thinking, let's get in the end zone this time. I don't know if that helped him at contract time. You, you could have kicked that one through. I don't know about that. <laughs> toe bash. I don't know about <laughs> toe that. Toe <laughs> Super toe. <Yeah. laughs> Now Trubisky to throw. And this is Gabriel on the catch. And he's got this almost to the 40 before going out. Mark that down as a pickup of 13, and the Bears have the first. People worry about throwing the out route because often it can get jumped, and that can turn into an either an incompletion or an interception. But not on that one. Everything came together, and he catches it and goes over the sideline. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. First down, a run with Cohen. And this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. Some runs are blocked so well, you almost forget that someone has to carry the ball to gain the yardage. The leverage by the offensive line to create space up front, really well done. The previous run, good for nine. Here's second and a yard. Again, it's Cohen. And they see right through that defensively as he'll be hit and taken down to the backfield. He'll wind up losing three, and now it's third down. Seems pretty obvious defensively a key was stopping the run game. How have they done it so successfully? To me, it seems that these guys really did a nice job of paying attention during the scouting report meeting. And you know, Brandon, when they do those, they talk about the top plays that these guys like to run, the best runs for the top running back. Those are the ones you focus on and want to take away, and they've done that pretty successfully in this game. On third down, a run with Cohen. And he got blown up. Losing yardage on the play back at the 44. Nothing doing on second and third down after that nine-yard gain on first. And the trend continues here in the fourth like it was in the first, second, and third. He's had nowhere to run. And you're probably thinking to yourself, why do they keep feeding him the football? Well, they trust him first and foremost. They do believe that over time he might actually pop one of these runs. But bottom line is, he takes care of the ball well for them, so they'll keep handing it to him. Here's Pat O'Donnell now, as he's on to punt for Chicago. And this is going to hit the goal line and continue on in the end zone for a touchback. And here comes the Texans now. The outcome of this one... Well, we know who's going to win it. And it's just all window dressing at this point. Got me thinking, what's what's the biggest blowout that you've been a part of as a player, broadcaster? Well, I'm not going to go to the player part because when I think blowout... Because you won about, every game as a no, player. No, no, no. I think about being blown out. <laughs> and no one wants to go back to those memories. But, you know, when I was calling college football, I saw a game that 
you know, team put 70. I actually saw it happen twice. The team put 70 on their opponent. And in the NFL in the 2017 season, I saw one of those changing of the guard games where a team that hadn't been very good before now was dominating and kicking around a team who had been ruling their division. And that's when you earn your paycheck, right? As the, as the analyst, you got to fill that time. You've got to know what's going on out there and how it all happened. Well, obviously, that begs the question. What game was it? That was Seattle hosting Los Angeles, the Rams. Ah, uh, yeah. Their second meeting of the season. And the Rams turned it around from the first one and blew out the Seahawks. And not too much going there as he'll get it up to the 23-yard line. It'll be a gain of two, and speaking of twos, it'll take us to the two-minute warning. The clock showing two minutes even in what's been a memorable Super Bowl 54. So it's Texans football as we welcome you back. They've got a third down now as they look for one more first down to help salt this one away. And boy, he is very close to a first down, but from where they're spotting that football, he's going to be a foot or so short. It's a six-yard gain, and it leaves them looking at a fourth down. And there's a run to be happy with. Good, solid yardage. They'll take that any time you hand the ball to a back. Here's Brian Anger now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. Oh, a nifty juke there. Not much fun for a guy trying to tackle it. That'll be a 48-yard punt, one yard on the return. And the Bears take over. The Bears offense now heading back out onto the field. They are just obviously getting shellacked here in this one, Charles. What's, what's the message if you're a coach for this final drive in a lopsided game like this? For a lot of coaches, be honest. <laughs> don't forget today. Don't forget what has happened out here. Yeah, use that as ammo exactly. going forward. Exactly. Take a great look at that scoreboard. Realize how poorly everything went for us today. Coaching, playing, the whole deal and never forget it because you're not going to want that feeling no again. you don't want that feeling again and who knows nowhere to escape and he goes down the lightning rod jj watt with a sack that right now that's a defeated team out there i think you can see it totally in their body language hands on hips heads low uh, it's just been a struggle from the start yeah this team has been thoroughly beaten right from the word go protection has been a problem all night long as they come up facing second and a bundle. Trubisky will throw to Gabriel middle of the field. And he's able to get this one all the way past the 30. That one good for 20 on the catch and run. One thing I can say pretty safely, that route is not called if you don't have a guy who can throw the ball and put some mustard on it because if you're going to lollipop it in the middle of the field, bad things usually happen it takes a strong arm guy who can rifle it in there and they were able to successfully complete that one so they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33 now it's Trubisky this is Miller, complete. The completion good for three, and it's second down. That first down completion only netted him three. Second and seven. Throwing here, Trubisky. here as he's taken down. And the lone 
Star State has a new champion. It's the Houston Texans, kings of the Super Bowl. And to the Super Bowl champions, they etch their name forever in NFL immortality. That's pretty phenomenal right there. It actually gave me chills just to hear you <laughs> say that because immortality forever and ever. When you look in the record books, you'll see this team, you'll see their picture, that your name will be a part of it. That's got to be an incredible feeling because it's been a long journey to get there, and now they get a chance to enjoy it. Super Bowl champs, the Lombardi Trophy is theirs, and so are bragging rights for an entire season. What a season it has been. Feels like we have been there every step of the way. Our entire crew doing a wonderful job. Thanks to my broadcast partner, Charles Davis. For all those guys, I'm Brandon Gunn signing off. We'll talk to you next season right here on EA Sports.